Okay, guys, we are going to do lab three, which is introduction to Amazon EC2. So I have the lab ready in front of me and I access the AWS console. You can see the AWS console in my second screen here. Now, what we need to do in this lab, this lab should take you about 35 minutes. And in task one, we want to launch an Amazon EC2 instance. So we are going to go to the EC2. And from the EC2, I'm going to create and launch an EC2 instance. You can see in the lab currently we have a bashing host. Now later on, you will use this bashing host in the advanced content of this class to access your private instances. So you can ignore it for now. You don't need to worry about it um, in this particular scenario. Now in the step one, I want to choose the Amazon machine AMI and they are asking us to launch an instance based on the first Linux, Amazon Linux 2 AMI, which is the first one in the top, select. Now for step two, they want us to choose a T2 micro instance. So I'm going to select T2 micro, which is the free tier. Now in the instance configuration in step three, they want us to put this in the lab VPC. And inside the lab VPC, I'm going to put it in public subnet uh, two, I think it's going to be lab vpc created information i don't think they specify which subnet there so i'm going to keep it in public subnet too i will make sure to auto assign public ip because i need this machine to have a public ip and then in step number 12 they are saying copy this script from here up to here right click copy into the user data so i come back to my console right click and paste it then I need to uh, basically add storage. Now this is script to do very few things. It will install using a yum, which is a package manager. It will install HTTPD. Then it will enable that server and start that service. And then it will put an HTML code in the default directory of Apache to just basically view this file, which is index.html, where it has one tag calling or saying hello from your web server. In step number four, I'm going to add storage. And if you look here, it's going to tell you just to click next and add tags. A generic rule, keep tagging your resources so you know exactly what you did and why you did it. So that name with capital letter, and I'm going to call it web server. Now, configure security group. In the security group configuration, they want you to create a new security group. You put the name web security group there. And the description, which is security group for my web server. Now, they are saying in, in this particular um, uh, uh, security group, we want to delete the existing, which is the SSH rule, for TCP port 22, we are going to delete that. And the next thing is to review and launch. Now, if you can see here in step 22, they are saying to select an existing key pair, which is what we have here, acknowledge and launch the EC2. Now this instance is going to be launched now and you can see it is in pending state now in a few minutes it will be a running state and i will start to see the status check there is two status check one out of two and two out of two now we need to wait for a status check until we see two out of two uh, check passed and then we move to task two which is monitoring your instance so we want to click on the status check tab and you want to click on the monitoring tab. So I'm going to select my EC2 using this checkbox here. And this is the status check. You can see it's running, status is running. And if you refresh from this page here, you can see I'm still initializing. So I'm still uh, due to wait a few more minutes. You could also look to the monitoring tab. And in the monitoring tab, this is will give you a um, a CPU utilization, 
And if there is any failure in the status check, if there is anything you need to worry about in the network traffic, as we'll see later on in the advanced lab. Now, in step number 28, they want us to go to action, monitor and troubleshoot, and get system logs. So we can just select the machine. Now, every time you want to work with an EC2, you need to select it first. So go to action, monitoring, and troubleshoot and get system logs. They want us to find this piece of information that the HTTPD is installed in this machine. Now I'm just um, going ahead of the lab because the lab is waiting for the status check to be ready and I don't have that yet. So we can wait or you just basically carry on. In, in, in the step number 31, they want us to get the instance screenshot, which is basically just to teach you that you are able to take, a, to take a screenshot from the instance if you need it for a specific purpose, like this is going to be the screenshot that you can get from the EC2. Click cancel. Now in task three, they want us to update the security group and access the web server. So they want you to select the instance, go to the details of your instance. And by the way, you can expand this a little bit to the top or to the, to the bottom based on the interface that you have in your machine. Uh, now in this particular scenario, they want us to copy the public IP address. I will use the copy from this icon. Never open it using this because this by default is going to be the default HTTPS protocol, which is not supported in this lab. We only run an HTTP website. Based the uh, uh, public IP address, I expect that I can't open the page here because in my security group, I never open port 80 to receive traffic to this um, um, instance. Now to edit the security group, whether you go to security, and select the security group. You can see there is no inbound rule. So I'm going to edit the inbound rule based on step number 40 here, add a rule. And from the add button, I just look for HTTP, select, I will make it anywhere and save the rule. Now, if you go back to your first tab and basically try to see the content of the website, you should be able to see this in few seconds. So now I can access my um, code or my demo website from the EC2 instance. Now they want us to resize the instance type and the elastic block storage volume. So the first thing they want us to do is to stop the EC2. So we're going back to the instances or by the way, you could go from here. Instance running, the web server, you ignore the bastion host totally. And from the instant state, stop the EC2. Now this is will make the EC2 stopped. Now we want to change the instant um, uh, type. Now be careful here, while the instance is in a stopping mode, you need to wait until it totally completely stopped. Now the instance is gone, why? Because I have instant state equal running filter, so I'm going to clear that. Now still the instance in a stopping state, I need to see that it is completely stopped. I could refresh the page. And now what we need to do is to go to the instance setting. And we want to have this option, which is change instance type active. Now this will not be active until I could see it stop. Now it became stopped, so I'm going to go back action, instance setting, change instance type, and the instance type that we want to change to is T2 is small. Select from the drop down menu, apply, and then go back to your instance and basically see what they need you to do in step 47. In step 47, they want us to increase the size of the volume. You can see on the left there is volumes, and this is the web server volume. 
they are saying in the step here go to action modify and change the size now to 10 gigabyte so we're going to change this to 10 gigabyte and then modify click modify again now the current reading in this web server volume is still 80 gigabyte because you have to do this refresh page to refresh from here in order to see the new instant size go back now in instant state and start based on the step number 55 you could explore the ec2 limits so in the left navigation pan they want you to go to the um, ec2 limits so you can see there is limits and it's normally you get basically those error because this is not a complete aws account a real one it's only a lab account and they give you like what is the limit to create so the current limit what are the reserved instance i could create it 20 security group i could create eight uh, all standard up to 32 virtual cpus the vpc security group per elastic interface is five because i only can create five elastic ip just carry on after this and test the termination protection where we want us to test that we can terminate this instance so now if i click terminate terminate this instance is going to be terminated now you could change the termination protection to be enabled and this is because i made a mistake when i launched the instance i never activate the option to protect it against termination so you could go for example i could show you here in the passion host an instant state action instant setting and change termination protection i could enable it save this will prevent me from terminating this instant so if i click terminate i won't be able to terminate it so instead i need to go in instant state termination instance uh sorry in instances uh settings uh, change termination protection and disable when you disable the termination protection this means anything or anyone can terminate the instance who have access to this console so this is pretty much lab three um thank you for seeing this and uh, see you in the class